I'm Katie from What Katie Did, and today I'm going to introduce you to Missy Malone. Missy Malone is a burlesque artist and performer, and she also um, puts together burlesque events. She's an actor, she's a model, she has um, her own vintage shop in Cheltenham, and she also sells online. But today we're going to talk to her about her um, collection, or a very tiny part of her collection of vintage burlesque costumes. So, take it away, Missy. Yeah, so this costume was one of my earliest um, purchases and I studied costume design at Edinburgh College of Art and um, it was costume design that I specialised in and I had a, in, an interest in um, sort of 40s and 50s films and musicals and things with chorus lines and all sorts of things. things. So this one I actually found on eBay and it was um, just called an old showgirl chorus line costume, but it said cloth set, rhinestones and glass bugle beads, hand sewn, handmade. So I thought it would be an interesting piece to have a look at the construction. It was, I think it was dated, but I, I don't know if it was accurately dated. I think, I think it's 40s. Um, it's got a high cut leg, uh, but that could just be for dancing. But when it arrived, it had a nice little surprise inside it because it's got the Paramount picture label in the back here and then also Paramount written on it in pen. And yeah, the construction of it inside is quite basic, but in keeping with um, film and TV costumes of that time, they never really put linings in them or anything. They were just sort of made um, to look good on the outside. And the other thing about this one is I think it has been worn by multiple dancers. So it's obviously been kept in a, in a costume storage because it's got like adaptions to the, to the cuffs for somebody who's maybe not been as busty as the lady before. So it's got some extra padding in there. And yeah, it's beautiful cloth set rhinestones and glass bugle beads, old sequins and some old glass rhinestones on a satin base. And then I have added tacked on so that it can be removed uh, an elasticated neck strap because I can't keep it up on its own. So the construction of these are really interesting because they're obviously made for certain body types and um, I just can't keep the top up. <laughs> so this one, yeah, is one of my favourites and one of my earliest in my collection and it weighs a ton. Yeah. Yes, I've got, um, if I was gauging it by suitcase, I think I've probably got probably at least 10 suitcases that size, maybe a little bit bigger, old suitcases with, I, I sort of put them in era or style. Um, yeah, so I've just brought a little selection today, but I've got loads. <laughs> I sort of, anything I like, anything I like, I will buy, but my sort of preference is 1940s and 50s, I suppose, and I'm really drawn to burlesque costumes, original burlesque costumes, because it's the area that I work in. And a lot of them don't, um, they do last, but they get worn quite hard. <laughs> so they are harder to find, I would say, than costume pieces, film costume pieces are sort of kept in nice storage. Burlesque costumes are worn to death until they are destroyed, basically. Um, still, which is usually the case today, any burlesque performer will tell you how many pairs of things have gone through in, in their career. Um, but yeah, I'm drawn to anything 40s, 50s, but I do have earlier pieces. Um, my Another early one from my collection, meaning when I bought it, I bought it, one of the first pieces I bought, but I think it's probably early 1900s. Yeah. And um, this one, I think, is probably a circus costume. So it's not technically always film or burlesque, it's any interesting performance costumes. And my degree was performance costumes, so anything really um, if I found anything by a performer of any type. I've got clown costumes at home as well. Um, but this one is gorgeous. And it's silk um, satin and then silk velvet ribbon and then pom-poms and everything and it's boned. And I probably would have had bottoms, but I don't know what they would have looked like. But this was an early piece that I bought um, as a student. But it's very delicate and the silk is all shattering down the sides. So a lot of the things I buy, at the time I bought them to just study them, to look at the construction of them and the fabrics. And then when I started buying burlesque costumes, I 
wanted to sort of mimic the originals rather than just buy lingerie, f you know, like a lot of my peers did and just add to it. I wanted to try and recreate the shapes that I liked. Um, so I've mimicked quite a few of the, the burlesque pieces which are coming up. Today, several burlesque artists actually work with um, off the peg lingerie and they embellish it to make it their own for costumes. And Missy's actually got a vintage piece she's going to show us, which shows that people did it exactly the same way back in the, back in the 40s and 50s. Yes, yes, it is, yes. I'll show you that one now. So this one was a lovely gift from a, from a uh, vintage dealer, my friend Willow, at Willow Hilton, um, gifted me this uh, little set, which again, I think has probably been, it's not been a burlesque costume, I don't think, because it's not quick removal, but it's probably been a little showgirl's costume or a dancer of some description. Um, but I don't know if technically a burlesque performer, but the bra is all hand runched satin but on the inside it's it's an original um shop bought bra from the time that's just been sewn on top of which is what a lot of performers do today they'll find a base piece if they're not great at um sewing or making their own costumes the be best way to do it easiest way to do it is to buy something that you like the shape of and then embellish on top of it so that's a good example of what they did even back then. Pin-up, probably just a pin-up posing outfit, I reckon. Pin-up model costume, yeah. Because I don't think it's been for dancing because it's not sturdy enough, but I love it. So cute, yeah. So I'll show you, first of all, a couple of the, these um, are quite amazing and I love them. These would have been bought from a, I don't know, technically a shop, probably not a shop front, but a catalogue maybe, a company for showgirls or dancers because it has, they have labels in it from New York. And these are great. They're sort of flesh-coloured power mesh. They're not stretchy though. They're not very stretchy. And they've got lovely soustache sequins and you could probably get them in all different colours and sizes. So that one is bigger, th this pair is bigger than this pair. So they were made obviously on the peg for different sizes um, and they look unworn. So these have come from a, a shop or a designer who's made them for people to buy ready to wear. And then this one is quite interesting. This one is, um, the label inside it is Tony Midnight, who was a famous um, 1950s drag performer in the burlesque circuit. And this one, I believe, was a drag costume so this one yeah I think most of the costumes made in that label were, were for drag performers of the time and this one's really made to a nice standard so I again I think that's been made by a designer and bought because it has its label inside so on the peg basically off the peg <laughs> I they never come with very much information so that one had the label and then I just researched it and found out more about the performer and see I have I still don't know if the performer made the costumes or just was the name behind the label or if it was their costume I'm not really sure so but I found out you know and found pictures of very similar ones and it would have been just a top half and then there would have been a dress section underneath um, and then this one yeah I found um, with this label that there was a, a dance costume company in New York with this one yeah so I just if it's got labels that really helps if it doesn't have labels, you just have to sort of keep searching. I collect a lot of uh, original burlesque photograph books with photographs in them. And I look really closely at everybody in the picture. So everybody in the background, if it's a changing room picture, everybody getting dressed, everybody on stage, everything to see if I can recognize any of the pieces at all, because that would be the only way that you could really identify it if, it, if you matched it in a photograph. But I don't know. I, there's a couple of pieces in my box that I do know the performers that own them, um, but most of them are unknown um, burlesque performers. And I'd love to have known who made them, but unless they've written their name in it very clearly, I, I don't know. Okay, so go, moving on to burlesque costumes that were made by the performers themselves. Um, they're most commonly quite crudely made, um, like most of burlesque costumes today <laughs> are still quite crudely made. If you make them yourself, you'll know what I'm talking about. They're just, you know, 
if you're not having a designer make them, they can be not great up close. So my favourites out of my collection of burlesque pieces, this one is a real classic um, design, which you'll have seen if you look at any 1950s burlesque performers, late 40s into the 50s, right up to late 50s. Um, these flesh net bras, which are pretty much nude. This one has embellished nipple areas. Um, and some of the states in America had laws against you couldn't wear, you couldn't go topless, you couldn't, you had to wear pasties. Some places you couldn't even wear pasties. You had to wear some sort of covering. Some places you had to just cover the bottom. There was all sorts of things. Bum cracks you weren't allowed to um, show either in some states. So th this, I'm sure, would have been used in the states where you couldn't remove the bra. So that was as, as skimpy as you could get legally. And this one's got lovely beaded embroidery and sequins done by the performer, I think. Quite nice, this one. Um, and that would have been the final piece of the striptease on the top half. So this is one of my favourites. So this one is not very showy, but it was owned by a very famous burlesque performer called Blaze Starr. And she was um, a famous burlesque performer in the 1940s and 50s, right up to the 60s, I think, in New Orleans. And there's a film about her and everything. It's, yeah, she's a fascinating character. Um, and this, I don't know if it was an unfinished one or if it was just an under piece. I'm not really sure. It doesn't have a lot going on, um, but it came from a, an estate sale of her items. So that one, it has nice provenance. And, that, and then I have another one, uh, another fun piece, which belonged to Lynn O'Neill, who was another performer based mainly in New York. And she was called the Garter Girl, and she used to make garters and small little knickknacks like this with her mother. Um, and she had a fan club, and she would send her fans garters or knickers or whatever. They would send her money and she would send them a little keepsake and probably promise that she'd warn them whether she did, I don't know. But I think this is a pair of them. But it has the little bum crack panel, um, which I love because, yeah, that just, that obviously saves your modesty on the back there. So that's Lynn O'Neill. And then the, this one is another one that I love because I've mimicked it with one of my own costumes. And it's a really heavy glass bugle beaded um, triangle bra. All the elastics are usually gone in these old bras, but this has such great movement and shine. So I've sort of mimicked that on one of my costumes for my Gold Rush act. And I love the triangle shaped bra, which is really typical of the early to mid 50s burlesque performers. Yeah, and crudely made, they don't stand up to close inspection very very well but I love them because they would have been sewn in dressing rooms and sort of repaired on the go and that's why I like them because if you look at my costumes closely they'll be exactly the same. Yep. So carrying on with the handmade burlesque costumes this is another piece that I um, bought from Neil Kendall um, who is a well-known burlesque photographer and this is a great example because it shows you how the construction works with this, my favourite style of burlesque costumes. So if, if you were to check out any of my stage costumes, a lot of them are this shape. So the triangle bra, the sort of V-shaped panel, and the panel skirts like this. And all of these pieces, pieces detach. So that piece has a, a button underneath. Modern day, it's usually a popper or something. So there's a button under here that comes off so that you have a panel that you can dance with and then remove one at a time and it has glass bugle beading fringe all on the bottom and nice moustache on it and the bra has great little um, tassels built in and this one didn't have its original elastic but usually they unclip from the front the center front um, for a quick easy release um, and that's how you can usually tell if it's a, a stripper's bra because it'll be a front release of the triangle bra. There'll be none of this and none of this. It'll just be quickly open and off. And then you have your panel skirt on the back, which often pops off as well. And then this, the, the panel, the hip panel, unbuttons at the side. And then you're left with your G-string for your finale. And this one is silk and uh, glass bugle beads and metal backed 
glass gemstones. But yeah, again, hand sewn, not, not amazing sewing skills. Lots of little repairs, little tears that have been sewn up where they've stood on it on stage with their heels or something. So I love it. It's, um, it's had, had a life and that's why I love it. I, I would find it hard to sell any of my costume collection, but it does, it does happen. If I buy maybe more run-of-the-mill in the sense of it's like a pin-up um, costume, sometimes I get more than one. So I've got three of the same one. I got it when I was in Hollywood last time at a costume sale. Um, no, not Hollywood. It was, in, it was in Burbank. It was in one of the, cost the, you know, the old film costume shops. And they were having a sale and there was three matching um, dancing leotards and I bought all three. So I still have them because I sort of like the idea of doing something with three people. But yeah, I probably would eventually sell them. If it's a piece like this or a, a piece of burlesque history, I probably wouldn't be able to sell that. Um, but my shop, I sell a lot of vintage swimsuits, bikinis, things that could be used for pin-up modelling or burlesque or performance but maybe didn't start off with that life that could easily be used by a performer. I do sell them. I've got some pieces I should have brought, but I have some pieces um, that are from dancers in Soho. So there's, there's one that I think, I can't, I can't be sure, but I think it comes from the windmill. And I've got some from Raymond Review Bar time, the 60s sort of style, and they're really heavy fabric. So it's like, some of them are like almost curtain fabric and it's really theatery. It feels like a costume that would be in a theatre or a, that you'd find in a, a pantomime storage costume somewhere. It's, they're quite heavy fabrics and they're very showy, glitzy, but they're not, yeah, they're not as delicate and they're not as skimpy. They're, they're still, you know, shapely, nice shapes, but they're, they're quite costumey in their style. And not as many gemstones beading on them, not as much glitz. That's in you know in my personal collection. <laughs> to find out more about me, you can find me at missingmalone.co.uk and on Instagram, Facebook, and the shop is called Malone's Vintage. And again, you can find us on Instagram under Malone's Vintage, Malone'sVintage.co.uk, and Malone's Vintage on Facebook. I'd like to thank Missy for bringing all her pieces along and, of course, all the links for Missy Malone you'll find in, find in the credits about her boutique and her performing and her modelling. And also, she does a lot of Facebook Lives as well about her vintage collection, so please, please do check her out. <laughs>